What's up, everybody? We are back at it here with another full day of Charlie Adelson recordings. It's actually been two days. And I think it's interesting with some of the stuff that we know now about the trial and how it's going to go. And we can kind of look back on some of these recordings to discuss why the state played them like this, why the state kind of um, put their case in the order and manner that they did, because we know the state has now rested. And we heard from Wendy Adelson's um, family law attorney that said, basically, this divorce was nasty, but a lot of divorces were nasty. But more importantly, before she testified, as always must happen in a case, the state rested. The state rested. So their last witness was this law enforcement officer to go through all of the undercover recordings, all of the tapes, all of the transcripts, the video of the bump, and to present what my main takeaway from all of this is people don't really talk like this unless they're involved, right? That's kind of what I got as the evidence is coming out. This is a live, Virginia. This is a live. And Rebecca just can't stop, won't stop gifting memberships. Thank you, Rebecca. Gifted a bunch in our last video. Um, But as I'm listening to these tapes, and I'm going to recap a lot of them, we're not going to listen to two full days of recordings that were hard to hear and read transcripts. But we're going to recap a lot of them. Um, you just don't talk like this if you really have no clue what they're doing. And we've kind of talked about it from the jump. Like once you get approached by somebody, you, you look at a piece of paper immediately to see what it says. You don't wait. You don't put it in your purse and then not look at it for hours. You don't automatically know who they're talking about. If they reference a Kate or an ex-girlfriend or a family or something happening up North two years later, you don't, you don't just immediately know what they're talking about. And I think that is really the reason the state put these recordings and this witness up last so that the jury would understand how it all comes together and how the defense can make all these arguments and poke all these holes. But at the end of the day, when Charlie Adelson, and Donna Adelson, Kate McBonwa, and Sigfredo Garcia didn't know anybody else was listening, their conversations were damning. They even tried to use code words. They tried to meet up in person. So maybe they had a suspicion that somebody was watching or listening. And they still, they still spoke way too much about it, gave way too many indications that they were involved. I think that is that was the goal of the state presenting the evidence the way it did at the end of the trial. Uh, so let's go through some of what the undercover agent, or sorry, some of what the uh, witnesses said before the agent got up with the undercover recordings. We had the computer um, expert on cross-examination. Charlie's lawyer basically was like, he wasn't trying to hide these calls. He's calling his parents who he works with. He's calling his girlfriend. And a lot of people have questions about why in some of the recordings, there was some irrelevant conversation about how traffic was, how long it takes him to get from one office to the other, whether or not he's going to take this job, whether or not he's going to take that job. Why leave that in? It's not relevant. Well, under the rule of completion, the defense attorney can say, no, you have to leave all of that in there. And we're going to see how the state kind of stepped in it, cutting off one of the recordings early. But, um, the defendant wants to argue that he talks to all these people, not because he's in a, this crazy conspiracy with them, but instead because he works with them, lives with them, loves them. These are his relationships. And that's kind of why the defense wanted to leave in some of that stuff that may have seemed irrelevant. The undercover agent who portrayed the Latin King gang member uh, talked about how just a bump is an undercover deal to create face-to-face -face contact, especially years later, and hope that they then go talk to their co-conspirators, give us more information, which is, guess what? Exactly what happened in this case. Forensic engineer talked about how they extracted videos. And then we get to um, the discussion with the surveillance video and the person that brought out the surveillance video. And actually, I wanted to show this first. Um, so there is a part where they start listening to the video 
And Charlie Adelson starts basically talking about how Wendy Adelson, his sister, is no longer really a catch because of her age and because of her kids and stuff that was really, really gross to hear. And then the camera pans to him. And once again, he's smirking. Now, you know that we are not a proponent of zooming in on defendants' faces or making fun of what people wear or their hairstyles or whatever. But we do like to see the defendant's face, just like we like to see a witness's face, because a juror also gets to see the defendant's face and the witness's face. And it can have an effect on how they take things in. And so in this scenario, looking at Charlie Adelson's face, to me, makes him even less likable. I am going to play it on 1.5 speed. Anybody that wants to slow it down on their thing, you can hit this gear right here. And then you hit playback speed. And if you want to slow it down to 0.5, I guess that would make it normal if I'm playing it at 1.5. Or actually, it's not really how the percentages work, but you get what I'm saying. So let's take a listen to him describe how you know undesirable 37-year-old women with children are and smirk over at council table. Let me get that. You're a little fucking rock that crazy mom lives on the other street. Okay. Ted Barney got divorced from his wife. He's engaged now. I told you about that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he took, he took a whole bunch of people. He took, uh, you know, Warren Sapp. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He took Warren Sapp, Javon first, a whole bunch of his friends, like paid for everybody for like 20 people to go for the weekend to Atlanta. So, we'll go there and spend like $50,000. So, his wife ended up sleeping with Javon first. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, so he's engaged now. So, it's a girl sleeping with him forever. Okay. He has three. I'm that age group. I don't know. I'm wondering if it's two that one. It's not, I mean, yes, your kids are a blessing to be the real person that's somebody else. Yeah, that's right. I mean, listen, do I look like the kind of guy that wants to come home from work and talk to my 37 year old girl kind of while her kid parts of my face? No, then my nephews, I love them. But as far as dating someone, hell no. I know kids are a blessing, but do I want to go talk to my girlfriend and have her six year old kid fart in my face? And he's like smirking and saying, like, do I look like a guy that's going to date a girl that age with kids? It's, it's just not good and it doesn't look good. And they played a lot of conversations with him that just make him seem like a not very likable guy, which, you know, we talk about the generally bad guy rule. And once that starts to pile up, jury's not going to do you any favors. Now I'm not going to say they're going to convict you because of that or anything like that, but just generally speaking, it's not a favorable feeling from the jurors would be my guess would be my guess. Um, they played some recordings that show that the Adelson family medals in Wendy's love life or career money. Um, I got Wendy to accept a job, things like that. Um, lady law asked Peter is rapidly moving. How do you feel about it? I hope the mastermind behind this manipulation Donna and justice for the professor. I won't have, thank you for providing coverage on the matter. I think what you're saying is Donna should also be involved here. It seems like there could be future arrests coming. It it really, really feels that way. Whammo. Why didn't counsel talk to Charlie about his demeanor during the trial? Maybe he did. Uh, Clients don't always do what we tell them or can't always control their emotions. Crystal, I'm not buying extortion. Why not? Go to the cops if you're not involved. Ding, 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 Crystal. I think that is a very fair question to ask. Because you can say extortion. You can make these arguments. The problem is, if your actions don't back up your arguments, the jury may feel like you're trying to mislead them. And a lot of that came out through um, these videos. And I will say that, you know, sometimes siblings talking crap about their parents or parents talking crap about another sibling is par for the course happens. So the fact that he said, Oh, Wendy can't make a decision or I don't know why she's getting that job. It's dumb. Like none of that stuff really bothers me. The fact that they, you know, meddle in her life. Some people say that's caring about your sister's life, you know, wanting her to take the good job or, you know, do this or do that. Obviously this family went too far, but some of the recordings in my opinion are better than others for the state. Some of them are just kind of meh to me, to me. Um, Okay, so I thought this was interesting. We actually have video of the so-called bump um, so that we can see exactly what this looked like when the other undercover agent um, bumped into Donna Adelson and what he said, kind of how it acted, but most importantly, how Donna Adelson acted after the interaction with this undercover agent. 
Jackson. It is, and she's exiting the Icon, which is on South Beach, her, her condominium. That's the stairs coming from her condominium toward the street. And the kids end up going to school a block from their condo. Okay, I'll get back. That's Donna Adelson on the right. Is that Adelson? Hey, Joe, just want to give you this. Um, listen, <laughs> good, don't be scared. Listen, just want to let you know that uh, you know that your family uh, has been taking care of Katie and her friend Ruzo for quite some time after your problem up north. We know your family's helping Kate for some time about some stuff that happened up north. Uh, and I want to let you know that my brother, he's incarcerated. He helped your family with this problem that it's had up north. And we want to make sure that he's going through some rough times. We want to make sure that you take care of, the, of what he's going through, the way you're taking care of Katie and uh, Tuba. Well, this will explain it. Thank you. First off, she takes it. They're in broad daylight. I'm not even sure I would have taken it. I would have probably tried to walk away from the guy and immediately called the cops personally. She takes it. If you were going to take it out of curiosity, what's the first thing you would do? I would probably read it, be like, what the heck is this about? Um, and then I would call my husband. But what does she do? Because she's basically a pro at this point. If I'm the state making this argument, she's basically a pro. In all their conversations, you can tell the Adelsons and Kate Magbanwa have their story straight. They're pros. They know what to look for. They know what to do. They know what not to do. They know how to use code. Um, they know how, when they have to meet in person to talk because, you know, they could tap phones, you know, to get, need to get to a landline, star 67, all sorts of stuff that they're basically pros at this point. That's what the state's arguing. She takes it, sticks it in her purse, and then calls Charlie Adelson, has a cryptic conversation with him about how they need to meet up and talk. She references, you know, all the stuff going on, but doesn't want to specifically talk about what they all know it is about exactly. And again, some of this is not even disputed by the defense because they say, oh, aha, this proves there was a conspiracy to extort money out of the Adelsons. This proves their point. This proves their story. Um, and that really is something that I think is going to be hard to prove based on the content of a lot of these recordings. Then there is a phone call between Charlie and the mom uh, shortly after this. We will jump to that now. And we're going to play it. It's really hard to hear, but the transcript is on the screen. And then I'll kind of summarize again some of the points that come out during this. I should bring cash. I don't have much cash to work. Yeah. Oh, okay. She asked him for cash and he like doesn't get what she's talking about, so she keeps talking. Was it can I ask you, is someone blackmailing you? You keep someone trying to blackmail you? No. Uh, that's crazy. Is it is there uh I don't know what blackmail is but is there any way I could see you? Can't come up here at all. It's, it's going to be difficult if they don't finish like the camera because she doesn't need to about 4 15. And even if I um, came up there and got there. Frankly, Donna's a little better at this than Charlie. She's like, we need to just talk in person. And he's like, okay, okay. Well, can I just meet up with you today? His curiosity is killing him. And he continues to push, continues to push. And they start talking about if it's a threat, we go to the police, things like that. 4 15. 4 15. It was going to be tough to, you know, necessarily get back here in time for when you pick them up. Was, was this, can I, can I just ask you this? Was it, is this anything government related or is this like a uh, whack job writing a letter to you? Like who? Is it like a whack job writing a letter to you or is this government related? Um, no, I don't think, I don't know if it's government related. So it's not like government or military or, no. or anything like that? No. no. Was, who is the letter addressed to? For me. To you. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. 
And again, under the state state's theory, he thinks it's crazy. And he says throughout all these recordings, well, we don't even know anybody's name. We don't know what happened. We don't know how they did it. We don't know who it was. We don't know where, when, how, any of those things. Like they have insulated themselves so well. So he's like, how could it possibly be addressed to you? You don't even know the person that did it. That doesn't make any sense. A lot of people talking about Charlie Adelson's testimony, which we have heard is going to happen first thing tomorrow morning. And we've got a poll ready. I think Bella is going to post it now. How do you guys want to handle Charlie Adelson's testimony? I obviously cannot stream it all day, but I do have a clear morning tomorrow morning. And I was thinking maybe if you guys wanted to from like nine to 11 ish, we could live stream his testimony in its entirety potentially, but I will be pausing it and talking over it. Or would you rather just wait till tomorrow night and have a recap normally, like I normally do, um, on Charlie Adelson's testimony, vote on the poll, and then we will get the poll results. Bella, you can text them in that group chat once we have enough votes to give us an idea as to how we want to handle um, Charlie Adelson's testimony. Do you know who sent it to you? Um, that's a pretty good idea. That's a pretty good idea. But, um... Again, she keeps saying, let's talk later. Let's talk later. I will definitely, um, I guess you know if I'm going to get back to you and find for them to even know how to run the business. Is it, so you, the, whoever sent you the letter sent you a, an anonymous letter? Mm, okay. Did they sign it? They canceled everything. So someone showed up. Was it like by a process server? That's what I did was. It wasn't. Mm-hmm. Where did they Where did they come to you at? Um, when I walked out of the building, I went up the height and I looked at the drivers at the icon. Right. And then I walked and Again, she has said multiple times, let's talk about this later. And he keeps asking for more and more details. Again, which I just think doesn't look good for him. Exactly. Five feet from pressing the button so that I could cross the street to pick up the boys to talk to me. Right. And just to get that on the sidewalk. A lot of people asking for a both option. Both is not going to happen. The the live is a lot more difficult, um, but I will do it if that's what you guys want to do, but I, I cannot do both. So both is not an option. Okay, so you stay, you stay right here then, okay? You stay right here. I'll work on the computer when Ben finishes, okay? So, um, Hey, and he came over and was it a young guy, old guy? Really? And remember, this is years later. So that's why Charlie's like so surprised. Like, that's crazy that it happened. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, you have to get into stuff with insurance. I mean, it's, it's crazy that someone handed you a letter like that. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. Uh, you do better just keep it up on, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, She's like, let's just keep it up tomorrow. Let's meet up tomorrow. And he says down here, can you just take a picture of the letter and send me what someone sent you? She's like, no, no, no. I don't want to do that because she's a pro at this point. He is not, on the other hand, his curiosity is just killing. Is the person, is the person like threatening you or anything? Um, you know, you never know how to interpret these things. So let's not worry. And let's, um, let's meet tomorrow. I think that's better. Let's meet tomorrow. All right. Let me ask you this. Do you want to take a picture of the letter and send me what someone sent you? No. So it wasn't it wasn't the government or the military or somebody, it was just some random person. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. How long was the letter? Well, it was just a copy of the article that's not written on the letter, but uh, it was written on a copy of that letter. Is the person threatening you? Well, I don't think we should. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of thing. If there's a threat, you go to the police. Yeah. But, but anyway, let me. If it's a threat, you go to the police. And that's a common theme throughout this entire process. He keeps saying, if it's a threat, you go to the police. 
a couple things are very bad for Charlie Adelson. Number one, he never actually went to the police. Number two, if that's his philosophy and his defense is he's being extorted and threatened the entire process, why did he never go to the police throughout the entire process? That's the problem. What the state did a really good job of doing is when they talked about the train cars, you know how, how Donna only talked to Charlie, Charlie talked to Kate, Kate talked to Garcia, Garcia talked to Rivera. Rivera never talked to Donna. Um, Garcia never talked to Charlie. So they had it set up this way. And really, I thought they did a really good job of these recordings to show exactly how that's how it went, especially when something popped off like a bump. Then uh, Charlie has kind of a weird call with Kate, uh, especially if they did all of this. But again, some of this can be seen as coaching or planning or whatever. But I do think the defense can use some of this in their closing argument to say, see, they didn't even know what was going on. He couldn't even wait till he talked to his mom. He had to call McBanwa, which again is perfect for the state when you're using these recordings to show how all of this is connected. And they're obviously all the ones working into it. Okay. She, she didn't want to elaborate. Uh -huh. But she said that someone approached her on the street, uh -huh. called, called her by name, uh -huh. handed her an envelope with uh, something in it. Yeah. And uh, somebody was, she was really was going to detail. And was, I don't, I have no idea what this is in reference to. Uh -huh. But. Rebecca. Something regarding her son. So he says, I have no idea what this is in reference to. Something regarding her son, his ex-girlfriend, which never was actually said or relayed. But that's how you know. They know who Katie is. They know what the connection is. They know what up north is. And they connect these dots that you wouldn't connect if you didn't know what actually happened. That's one of the problems for them. Something regarding his ex-girlfriend and the person asking my mom for some money. What? Yeah. So I said, well, you know, I'm like, first, first what you're saying, I thought it was like something involving the IRS or, a yeah. or something like that. So I don't even know what the fuck it's about um, at all. So somebody just like bumped into your mom like that? Well, they, they came up to her on the street. I love how they say somebody bumped into your mom like that. Like they literally call it a bump. Uh, yeah, KO. I agree with you. And Holda, thank you so much. That's awesome. After she dropped the kids off at school, yeah. she, I guess she's gone to school. I, I don't even know. But they must know her routine. They must know who she is. Yeah. They walked up uh -huh. to her. They called, they called her by name. Uh -huh. They handed her an envelope. Uh -huh. uh, and she said they spoke to her for a few minutes. Uh -huh. uh, and then she said they were, you know, they were making reference to my ex-girlfriend. That is no fucking clue what that's about. Yeah. And, and then uh, they uh, explained that they needed to be paid for money. For what? I, I don't even know if you want to talk to me on the phone. Sounds genuine. He wants to be paid money. And McBond was like, for what? sounds genuine. So there are parts of it that I think the defense can try to use. Like, why would she say for what if she knew what's going on here? Pretty interesting. Uh, Kay, why doesn't she stop the conversation? She was trying to, but Charlie just kept pushing. Jenna, why do some defense lawyers still fight guilt when there's so much evidence of guilt? A couple things. Number one, if he believes his client and his client told him this is what was going on, his client has a right to that defense. Number two, his client still has a right for the state to have to prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt and make sure none of his rights are trampled on and all of these things were done appropriately, right? Especially with a case like this where um, we know for a fact he was not the trigger man uh, and if he's saying that he had nothing to do with it, I think it's it's fair that the state has to prove it. That's why they're allowed to get these wiretap information and build this evidence. And if they have enough where the jury convicts him, then the process worked. And if he's guilty, then he is uh, doing the time for the crime he has committed. Um, so this conversation continues on and he says things, you know, that weren't in there. And after this conversation, they play for the last 45 minutes of yesterday they discuss 
the recording when they actually get together. And for me, that's one of the most damning recordings. And the quote I wrote down from that recording was this, and this is what I would put up on the board in closing argument. If I was the state, I would say, just like Charlie Adelson said, and I would play this in the recording. If you blackmail someone, you know, can get something like this done. You've got a set of balls on you or something like that. I would put whatever that quote was. If you blackmail someone, you know, can get something like this done, get something like what done, Charlie, what did you get done? Well, we know what you got done. You hired a hitman. And would you really want to test and blackmail someone that could hire a hitman that completes the job? You'd have to have a set on you. Not great. And they opened up today um, with the prosecutor asking the law enforcement officer a lot of conversations about blackmailing, right? Any of these conversations talk about Katie blackmailing Charlie? about Sigfredo blackmailing Charlie, about Katie's friends blackmailing Charlie. Were they nice to each other on the phone or were they angry? And when they were angry, what were they angry about? Never the blackmailing, not one mention of it. And all of these hours of tape were also turned over to the defense. So you better believe if there was mention of some other blackmailing, it would be found somewhere on these tapes and the defense would have absolutely played it in front of this jury. But all these conversations about birthday gifts and TVs. Actually, that's a good point. Let me just bring that up. Let me bring up today's testimony. And let's take a look at some of the uh, code words. They'd use dollars like 6570, which is really an undercover phone number. They would talk about an agent, but really they're talking about Sigfredo Garcia. Uh, CD would be this recording. False lead or phishing would be a blackmailer, or you know they thought it might be you know a law enforcement officer. Investment properties that would be paying the undercover. Listing this would be those paperwork. One of two scenarios: insider blackmail versus law enforcement sting. So they use these code words, but they never try to use code words to cover up Kate McBonough's blackmailing of Charlie Adelson. And if you're Charlie Adelson, wouldn't you just want to get that out there on the phone, some admission of that? And later they, I think, put some recording device on Donna Adelson's phone that they use when she talks to the undercover agent and they celebrate and act like, wow, what a great thing they did. Why wouldn't Charlie Adelson have done that to Kate McBonough? That's something I'd ask him in cross-examination. Uh, they proved he knew details about the Prius um, and other things that he wouldn't have known unless he was involved. There's phone conversations with Sigfredo Garcia and Kate Magbanua about taking care of a problem, about Charlie Adelson getting a birthday present for Sigfredo Garcia. This is apparently a man that wanted to kill him and that he hated and that was extorting him out of all these all this money. And I also think it's kind of interesting throughout all these conversations, Charlie Adelson's like the expert on blackmail. He loves to say, mom, this is how they would do it. Not that they'd wear a floppy hat. They'd have a fake beard, sunglasses, whatever it may be. They didn't get the response they wanted as part of the bump or the sting. So they did it again. Um, Charlie Adelson says, if he's messing with you, then they're messing with me when talking to Kate McBonawa. Again, not something you would say to somebody who's trying to extort you. I wouldn't think. Kate does lose it on a couple of these phone calls and yells at Charlie, but let's listen to kind of a short conversation when Charlie, after Kate lies to him and says, um, that she called the undercover agent and they didn't pick up. Charlie basically takes matters into his own hand and calls the undercover agent. Here we go. 
what's going on is my brother Tato. Okay, my brother Tato has not been taken care of. His family's not been taken care of. I talked to the dentist. Why are you calling me? Who, who, who are you? Yeah. Hold on, let's listen to the beginning when he says who it is. Who is this? Hold on, we got Hello, we got Who is this? Who is this? Someone's been calling my family trying to figure out who it is. So, Someone's been calling my family. I'm trying to figure out who it is. Someone's been in a sand call? Yeah, that's me, man. All right, what's, what's going on? Well, what's going on? My brother is out there. Okay, my brother is out there. He's not been taken care of. His family's not been taken care of. I talked to the dentist. Why are you calling me? Who, who, who are you? I gave you a number to a lady. Who are you? I gave my number to a lady, that being Donald, Donna Adelson, Charlie's mom. I don't know, Tato. You don't know Tato? I'm not even know Katie. Hey, people, they've been taking care of since their family's problem is taking care of us more. So, you know Katie and Tuto. They've been taking care of him. And he doesn't say no. I don't know them. What he says is, I don't know who you are. Which, again, these are all things I'd point out if I was the state in my closing argument. I don't know who you are. You don't? Well, I'm not going away, my friend. Because let me tell you something. I was a driver with Tato, and he told me the whole story. He told me nobody was taking care of him, nobody was taking care of his family. His family uh, was taking care of Katie and Tuto, and nothing was taking care of Tato. So we know. We know what's going on. But Tato needs to be taken care of. Do the right thing. The lady over here has the paperwork. She knows what I'm talking about. Not the best undercover work, in my opinion, but enough to get Charlie Adelson to talk to where he absolutely knows what this guy's talking about. He's saying, I don't know certain people trying to figure out what's going on, but like you call the cops if you really think this is an issue. I mean, that that's what I think. And that, that's what I would argue. Let me look into things, he says. Also something I probably wouldn't say. That's my brother, man. That's my brother, and he needs to be taken care of. His family needs to be taken care of. Just like people are taking care of. Uh, I've never met, met these people, but let me call you back, okay? That's bullshit, man. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know this lady. I don't know your relationship with lady, but we know what the fuck is going on. All right. So that was the end of that one. Um, eyes ghoul. Why would this family do this? The crime and social status correlation is weird here. They could have just left with the children, which would have been much lighter crime to deal with. What is your number one theory currently? People overreact and do stupid things. Um, they think they play big shot. Sometimes you feel like you're untouchable, which some of the testimony has been like about Charlie Adelson. Cause you're right. There's a million different ways to handle this, you know, paying him off or trying to do this or that, or just moving up to Tallahassee. If you really want to just be with your kids and your grandkids, if you're that well off, let the dental practice sell the dental practice. Charlie Adelson didn't care to be around the kids. If the parents cared so much, move up to Tallahassee, move somewhere closer. I mean, there's a million different ways you can handle this with money and with time and whatever to not take such extreme measures that have such incredible blowback and repercussions. It makes no sense to me that successful, smart people would do this. But it happens. Lita said, interesting that Katie never put Tuto and Tato together. Did she not know that was what Sigfredo Garcia and Luis Rivera called each other? I don't know. I also don't know if um, she knew that Garcia took Rivera with him, or if she was like, I don't want to know what happens. Just, you need to take care of this. I don't really know. Uh, Monique, Peter, are all defense strategies are signed off by the defendants, right? So not necessarily, usually you want to run them by them so they know what's going to happen, but that the, the trial strategy is up to the lawyer. There can be a difference of opinion on how to handle it. Usually the lawyer is able to do what they think is best for the case. Now, a defendant can fire a lawyer 
or can can make certain calls or waive certain arguments and maybe put something in writing where the lawyer's like, no, we need to make this argument. Kind of like uh, Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. Like the, the attorneys, I think, wanted to point the finger at Chad Daybell even more, and Lori said no. So they didn't go so far, but they definitely somewhat pointed the finger in closing argument, which Lori seemed upset about. But there can be kind of a difference of opinion when it comes to that. And, you know, unless you have a client really waiving certain rights, trial strategy and case strategy is usually left up to the lawyer. But you always want to be on the same page as the defendant, for sure. Carolyn, uh, both. I have a question. If the bump wasn't successful, would they have used that footage anyways? Depends on your definition of successful. And this one definitely was successful because it got them talking. Um, they could have used that footage just because that footage alone can make the Adelsons look bad that she just took it and put it in her purse and didn't even look at it and then immediately called Charlie, whatever it may be. Mimi, do you think Donna will be charged after this? I don't know. I don't know how far they want to take it, the resources that they want to spend on it, but it definitely se seems like she's definitely involved as Charlie or anybody else, right? Rebecca, whatever you have time for, you have a life and family. Thank you, Rebecca. Last I looked, it was 55% live stream, 45% recap. If it's that close, it'll probably end up being a recap. It's just easier to fit into my schedule than the live stream. But if the numbers sway um, for the vast majority in the live stream, then we may reconsider. Um, all right. So then there were more calls. They kept saying, you know, we don't know what you're talking about. We don't know what you're talking about. It's so obvious that they're trying to hide things in a lot of these conversations. Um, so here was an interesting uh, conversation by Charlie Adelson as well. So 40 would be 720. So 420. So what's interesting here is uh, I'll play it and then I'll point out the part that, again, I, I think would be huge for the for the prosecution. Uh, I don't think there's aggravation for this as far as it. You hear any? I absolutely will. Right? Well, By the way, this, this quality of the video was freezing and was so annoying while it was happening. There's nothing I can do about it. If you go ahead and make it seem like, you know, you're being extorted or blackmailed or anything. If you go ahead. All right. So listen right here. I'm going to play it again because it's so bad. He says, you can go ahead and make it seem like you're being extorted or blackmailed. And, right? But if you go ahead and make it seem like, you know, you're being extorted or blackmailed or anything like that, then what are you going to do? So has Charlie Adelson been playing this defense planning this defense for quite some time you can always just saying say you're being extorted or blackmailed there isn't even really a threat he does talk about how uh he doesn't want wendy fearing for her safety um everybody handles death differently so they can't look at me and say you know one person um talking about how they were sad or weren't sad doesn't necessarily make them guilty of anything. Um, what they don't talk about is how Katie is blackmailing them, even in these secret calls to each other between Donna and Charlie, because we've got to remember that. Maybe he doesn't say anything to Katie or fight with Katie about it because he knows she can, you know, get him in trouble at this point because he's been paying the blackmail. But why wouldn't Donna and Charlie ever talk about Katie blackmailing them if that's really what's been going on this entire time? Right. All right. Let's look at a text message here. All right. So this is the undercover to Donna Adelson. So you don't take me serious. You think I'm playing. You have some puta call me to see if I'm for real. If you think what Katie's baby daddy did for you, you can't come back. You're effing crazy. I want the money now, or I'm going after the hundred K. So the hundred K they reference is, um, the reward for information on the case. So this is interesting because at this point, the Adelsons are pretty confident that this is a cop and not somebody that's a bad guy or scary or things like that. Um, but let's listen to the undercover call between Donna 
and the undercover cop who I think, again, at this point, it seems like they know that this is an undercover cop and not a bad guy. Um, I believe she actually won a. <clears throat> this is this is Mrs. Dale saying. Is this um Hello? Sammy? Sammy. Okay, my grandchildren had my phone before, so. Um, I is can... it Adelson? I'm Mrs. Adelson. My yes. Yes. Yeah. My grandchildren yes. had my phone before, so that's when I just thought that you called. Oh, okay. I was, I, you, I was... you left the message on my on my voicemail. Right, I did. No. <laughs> this is my problem. You approached me on Holton Road. You handed me an article from the newspaper about my ex-son-in-law. You told me I need to call you and help your friend who was in prison. Now, at the time you did that, I didn't understand what you were talking about. I didn't call you back. Then you mail me a threatening letter. Then you send me a text message to my phone that says I'm not taking you seriously. So I am taking you seriously. And I really want you to listen to me. I I have to tell you, I mean, this is important. I, I have been so stressed out. I have spoken to 10 or 12 people who are close friends of mine, telling them about this and basically picking their brains and asking them what I should do because I don't know your friend who is in jail. I don't, I, you, you mentioned a name. I don't even know his name. I never spoke to him. I don't know what he looks like. I've never met him. I, I'm sorry your friend's in jail, but I don't know what that has to do with me. Do, do, you, you, know, you know exactly what it has to do with. You, uh, you know. Again, deny, deny, deny. And he says, oh, you know exactly what's going on. You know exactly who we're talking about. No, exactly. Listen no. to me carefully. Listen, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. You, you got. You, you just got. You just got to listen to me. You need to you ask gotta, your friend no. who this person looks like, or what their name is, something. Because I know there's a big reward out there, and if you need money for your friend, that's the way to get it. I mean, I'm that's that's pretty good and ballsy, right? There is a reward. I think you need to go get it if your friend needs money. You need to go tell whoever you need to tell to get that reward. That doesn't sound like somebody who's involved or somebody who's scared or somebody who's guilty or somebody who did this or is involved in the conspiracy, right? But the state argues that, you know, the, what does it mean to be made and that they start to understand and things like that. Asking you nicely, I don't know who he is. I am out of the loop. It is not me. If I can help, I would help. I mean, I, just like I told you that day, we know. Yeah, how many bad guys sit there and wait for you to finish and don't interrupt you and say, wait, but, but wait, just listen, wait, listen to me. Maybe, maybe not the best, but it, it got the job done. But we know that, that your family had a problem up north. We know that that problem was taken care of like about a year and a half, two years ago. And we know that Katie has been taken care of and has been mm -hmm. taken care of. Now, now my brother, my brother in, in jail, he, we were in Broward together. He told me the whole thing, and he hasn't been- My brother in jail. I also don't necessarily know that that's what they would say, but- Taking care of. You know. I now, know. All, 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 we're, all, all that's being asked for is 5K. Five, five that's all we're asking for is for 5K. And he, I, he told me everything, and I know everything. I know who's involved. I know everything, and I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get the 100K for myself. You know, I- All I ask is to send the 5K. You, everybody knows what's going on. I don't, you know, you're saying everyone knows. I know I lost my ex-son-in-law. I did not have anything to do with it. That's why I said, ask him what- so They mentioned the problem up north, and what does Donna Adelson say? I know I lost my ex-son-in-law. Again, not admitting anything, but basically filling in the gap of what the problem up north is, right? That's what, that's not, that's not, that's what not my, my brother Tasso told me. He told me everything when we were in jail. He told me everything, oh. and who was involved. I know everything. Well, I don't. That's the problem. I am telling you, it's not me. It's not me. I have had a year of aggravation, a year and a half of aggravation over this. My my daughter, my grandchildren. It is not me. And when I asked my friends, what do they think? They said, well, this person needs to get a description of you because of what you look like. Or It's not me. I don't know who caused this. It wasn't me. I mean, I... Uh -huh. I don't know uh, just, 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 Yet they never go to the cops, which the state points out. 
just like that day when I talked to you, this is not going away. This is not going to go away. The staff told me everything. He was being taken care of. He needed the 5K. Spent 5K. That's all. That's all we were asking for. If, <laughs> don't do that. I don't know who Sato is. You don't understand. I, we know you know who Sato is, but you know who Katie is. And you know the context Katie has. And she has, listen to me, let's stop fucking around. Let's stop fucking around. <laughs> okay? You know who Katie is. And you know that Katie has somebody that knows Sato. And they, and they took care of a problem for you people. That's just the bottom line. The bottom line is you know, you know who the fuck Katie is. Look, I don't. I, I'm no more, no more Mr. No, I, I'm not fucking. I'm not fucking around with it. You know who Katie is. Do you know that they took care of Katie and her people? Nobody's taking care of Tato. You, I know you don't know who Tato is. No, I don't. But we know, we know who all of you are. And this ain't going away. You know what? So I can give you that. You want them to find Katie? Here's what you need to do. You need to go and don't lie, don't tell me what to do. I know what to do, and I'm doing it. You're looking for money. Get up. No, it sounds like you're begging for five grand. Like it just is not not the best undercover work. But regardless, got the job done for the most part. Um, then at the end of all the recordings, uh, I think like the very last one when they start talking about he got a nice pot belly pig, and he's like, you know what a pig is, right? And they're using that word and this to talk about law enforcement. And then again, flash to Charlie Adelson, and he has that smirk again. I don't think that goes well for them. Uh, sorry. I can't wait for you. You're pretty single. I know. It's playing in the background right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Dropping like a hot. <laughs> it, it's going to be like one of the funny things. Do you think it's going to make good hits? Oh, I think it's fantastic. Yeah? Yeah. I think it's fantastic. Really? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Looking to make a whole lot of money. Want to make money? They already have their kids. I'm not looking to make a whole. She well, owes it to those kids. Yeah, but she, she has an opportunity that she would throw in the garbage, and then these kids. And believe me, that's it. They're not. Oh, I think it's the video's updating because court was ending for the day, so we may have to refresh. No problem. Let's go out here. We almost finished it. I think it's right around 646. They want to make money. They already have their kids. I'm going to play you at 20 minutes and 20 seconds. To make a whole so I want to make money. They already have their kids. I'm not looking to make a whole She well, owes it to those kids. Yeah. But she, she has an opportunity that she would throw in the garbage and then these kids. And believe me, that's it. They're not going to have another no, dad. No. Well. It was, it was a tragedy. Listen, it was a they had a daddy. It's a tragedy. What happened? Yeah. Well, what I'm, what I'm telling you. So there, 20 minutes and 25 seconds into the call, about two minutes after Mr. Ms. Kappelman stopped it, Charlie Adelson says it's a tragedy what happened to their dad, right? Yes, he did. And that was in response to his mom saying Dave would be a great dad, right? Correct. And Charlie says they already had a dad, and it was a tragedy what happened to him. He did. When Charlie Adelson said that on this call, that was stopped before this jury. When he said that on that call, that's before the bump. I believe it was, yes. That's 21 months after the murder. Correct. It's pretty good evidence for the defense, right? That he didn't really know that he was being watched or there were any issues, you know, drumming back up again because the bump hadn't happened yet. It had been almost two years from when the crime occurred. And he said it was a tragedy what happened to the dad. Now, you can still be involved and still think it's a tragedy, especially after some reflection and time and, you know, seeing how it's affected your sister and your nephews. So, I mean, I don't really think, I don't really think that's that great. But I mean, it, the fact that the state cut it off before then again, to make it seem like the state's trying to hide stuff from the jury, I get, you know, why he was um, trying to play that. Uh, Melanie, can Charlie change his mind and then decide in the morning not to testify? Yes, he can do that. Uh, Nirvana, the perfect punctuation of the text gave it away. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Brooklyn Basement, where's the line regarding the bump and entrapment? So we have had an entrapment defense. My dad and I have actually gone to trial on it before. And you would be shocked at how involved law enforcement gets involved in some of these crimes and putting ideas in people's heads and giving them the means to, to do all of this stuff. But at the end of the day, juries usually look at, you know, even if it's all provided for you and somebody was trying to talk you into it, should you have ever said yes? Should you have been able to be talked into it? Um, in this situation, there wasn't really an entrapment because they just wanted them to talk about a crime that was committed way back when. Um, entrapment would be if Charlie Adelson couldn't afford the hitman and law enforcement was like, ooh, let me give you this money. Don't you think it'd be a good idea to hire a hitman to do this stuff? And they plant the idea and give the money. You know, that would be more entrapment than what we have here. And even that has not worked in some cases. KO, uh, how have 10 to 12 people not told her to call the cops? KO, I'm going to let you in on a little secret that I, uh, some people have even admitted on the stand. I think they lie on these phone calls. <laughs> a lot of people have literally admitted that. Uh, Patty, Peter, I was surprised Charlie was going to testify in his defense. Your thoughts? I Since opening statement, I figured he was going to testify. I don't know how they get this theory in or connect all these dots without him testifying. Netwoman, I assume this is you upgrading your membership of some sort or maybe re-upping your membership because you are responsible for like a huge percentage of our members as it is. So thank you for that. Monique, why didn't she record the call to prove she was being extorted? Well, it is a crime to extort a call or to record a call, which it sounds like she did anyways. Um, but that's a big question. Why not call the cops and tell them you're being extorted? Oop, I'm, I'm a little late here on my time. So let's run through just a couple more. KO, anyone have Peter saying puta on their uh, bingo card? <laughs> Bad words in other languages, I guess, don't, don't trigger the same. Rebecca, I literally don't know how you do both, Peter. You are a true leader. When I get off work, I need to shut my brain off. Keep doing you. Thank you, Rebecca. I appreciate that. It's, it's enjoyable. I really like... Um, I really like discussing this stuff with you guys, hearing your opinions on it. There was somebody in a chat today that was saying like, stop asking the chat for their opinion. We're here for your opinion. 
it's like, honestly, the whole point of this is to get your opinion and to learn from you guys as well, convincing lay people, um, of cases, explaining cases to them, educating that to them is a big part of my job. So I appreciate all of your input always, regardless of if it doesn't sound genuine, it is, I promise. Um, Lou LaRoe, welcome. And Rebecca, lastly, how about those Cowboys and all the fantasy points? Lamb and my man Dak got me. Love this channel. Yeah, another loss. I think I'm four and four, just barely skating by in our members fantasy football league, but I will be in the mix come playoff time. Um, okay, that's all I've got. I've got to run today. I've got to get home. I appreciate you guys so much. It seems like it was pretty much a 50-50 split, so I'm leaning towards a recap. Uh, but if I do go live tomorrow, check that. Check, uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you do get notified. Um, but maybe I'll go live afternoon or 5 o'clock again, something like that, to recap Charlie Adelson's testimony. You guys are absolutely the best. I appreciate you so much every time you come on here to hang out. But until next time, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who might be interested here on YouTube. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, at Lawyer You Know. But on Instagram, we are still at Tragos Law. So look us up on there. And don't forget to listen to The Lawyer You Know podcast, available on all major podcast platforms. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us lawyer, you know, at gmail.com. Of course, all of these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tragos, the lawyer, you know.